In this video, I am going to talk about systems of linear equations. One of the main focus of linear algebra would be system of linear equations. First, let us talk about the definition of a linear equation. It is simply an equation that can be written in this form, a1 times x1 plus a2 times x2, and so on until a n x n is equal to a constant b. Take note here that the a1, a2, up to a n are just constants, and so is b, and the a's here are not all equal to zero. Of course, if the a's here are all equal to zero, then that would mean that we just have the equation zero equals zero, and nothing is interesting about that. Here we call a1, x2 up to xn our variables, and the a's as our coefficients. This is an example of a linear equation. Our coefficients are 6, negative 8, and 10. And our variables are x, y, and z. Here is another example of a linear equation. What would be our coefficients here? Our coefficients would be negative 1, pi, and negative square root of 2. Take note that the coefficients need not be integers. Hence, these are all valid coefficients because they are real numbers. For a linear equation, we always have the form of constant times a variable. And then these are the terms that you appear and then another one and so on. Constant times a variable times constant times a variable up to another and that should be equal to a constant. This is another linear equation. We can write this as 5x minus y is equal to 10. This is not a linear equation. Why is that? First, take note that we cannot have square root of x. It's equal to x raised to 1 half. We cannot have exponents in our variables. The exponents of our variables should be equal to 1. One more thing is that one more thing is that we have here 1 over y. We cannot have a variable in the denominator. And also we cannot have this one. We have this wz over here. We cannot have product of variables. What is a solution to an equation? A solution to an equation is a value for each variable that makes the equation true. So for example, if you substitute x equals 3, y equals 4, and z equals negative 5, you can verify that it would satisfy this equation here. A system of linear equations is a collection of one or more linear equations involving the same variable. So take note that here, in this case, our variables would be x1, x2, and x3. A solution to a system of linear equations is a value for each variable that makes each equation true. We want all of the equations to be satisfied. And the solutions are often written as ordered doubles, S1, S2, and Sn, wherein if you plug in S1 for the first variable, S2 for the second variable, and so on, all the equations will be true. For example, negative 3, negative 8, 4 is not a solution to this system of equations. Let us see why is that. First, let's try the first equation. This means that we will plug in negative 3 for x1, x2, negative 8 for x2, and 4 for x3. Let's check. We have negative 6 plus 8 plus 1.5 times 4 is equal to 6. And that is really equal to 8. However, we have to check that it satisfies all equations. Let's try that for 
equation 2. We have negative 3 minus 16 and that is not equal to negative 7. However, this tuple here, in particular this triple here, is a solution to this system of equations. I will leave it up to you to verify that it satisfies all of these equations. Consider the following system of linear equations. If you recall when you studied solving systems of three linear equations in algebra, you are only manipulating the coefficients. In order to make our computations easier, we will now use matrices to record our coefficients and the constants that appear here. First thing that you have to do is to make sure that you line up the variables, just like in this case. All the x appear here, all the y's appear here, and all the z's appear here. Next, we will now record the coefficients. So in this case, we have 1, negative 2, 3, negative 1, 3, 0, because the coefficient of z here is equal to 0, 2, negative 5, 5. And then I will have an augmented matrix here. I have uh, lines here just to show you that these are the constants. All right. And take note that this would be the coefficients for x1, x2, x3, and these are our constants over here. You call this your augmented matrix. And if you are just interested with this one, the matrix containing all the coefficients, you call that the coefficient matrix. Take note that if you get your coefficient matrix, and then you form a column matrix consisting of your variables, x, y, z, and then you turn the constants here into another column matrix. When you multiply this two and equate it with this one, you will get this. So let's check. This is x minus 2y plus 3z. There you go, right? And so on. This product here is equal to this. Two matrices are equal when the corresponding entries are equal. So in general, if A is the coefficient matrix of a system of linear equations and X is the column matrix, this is not the variable X, but this is actually a column matrix consisting of all the variables, it is equal to B, where B is the column matrix consisting of your constants. In augmented form, that means we have A and then this is B here, where A is the coefficient matrix and B is the column consisting of your constants. Here is a definition of the augmented matrix and coefficient matrix, which I have just shown a while ago. The matrix derived from the coefficients and constant terms of a system of linear equations is called the augmented matrix, and the matrix containing only the coefficients of the system is called the coefficient matrix of the system. In this case, we say that the system of linear equations is written in its matrix form. In our previous example, we had a system of equations and we wrote its augmented matrix. Now, in this case, we have an augmented matrix and we want to find the corresponding system of linear equations. This one would be x1. The columns would be there, x1, x2, and x3. So therefore, for this one, the system of linear equations is 1x1 plus 2x2 plus x3 is equal to 0, 3x1 plus 0x2 plus x3 is equal to negative 1, and then negative 2x1, I have 0, this is 2x3, is equal to 
for. I will leave it up to you to find the system of linear equations associated with this augmented matrix. But just to start it off, we have here four variables. Now, when we were solving systems of linear equations, here are the following operations that produces an equivalent system. What do we mean by an equivalent system? Equivalent system means that they have the same solution. Number one, we interchange. We can interchange two equations. We multiply an equation by a non-zero constant, and we add a multiple of an equation to another equation. This third here is what we do to eliminate a variable. However, we know that when we are solving systems of linear equations, we can now write that in its corresponding matrix form. So therefore, arising from these operations and systems of linear equations, we can now define our elementary row operations. The elementary row operations are simply coming from the operations that came from the previous slide. So number one, we have the operation of swapping. Here we interchange two rows. Number two is scaling. We multiply a row by a non-zero constant. And the third is replacement, wherein we replace a row by adding a multiple of a row to another row. When we do this row operations on your matrix, the matrices that we obtain are said to be row equivalent. To illustrate, I have my system of linear equations here, and this is the augmented matrix. Let us solve for the values of x, y, and z, and let's see how it looks like with our augmented matrix. Here, what I would be doing is from x, y, z, I will go to y, z, and then solve for z. In order to accomplish that, here I will eliminate x, and then here eliminate y. In order to eliminate x, we will simply add the first equation with the second equation. First, I will copy the first equation. And the answer, when we add the first equation with the second equation, y plus 3z is equal to negative 4. I will just copy the third equation. The associated augmented matrix of this one is 1, negative 2, 3, 9. This is 0, 1, 3, negative 4, and 2, negative 5, 5, 17. Let us see what happened with our augmented matrix. In this system of equations, what did we do there? We added equation 1 with equation 2. Equivalently, what happened? with our augmented matrix is that row 2 was replaced by row 2 plus row 1. Next, remember that we want to obtain variables y and z only. I already have here y and z. I want to obtain here, therefore, another y and z. Hence, I will eliminate x. And in order to do that, I will multiply the first equation by negative 2 and then add it with equation 3. That's my scratch. This is negative 2x plus 4y minus 6z equals negative 18. And 2x minus 5y plus 5z. 17. We have negative y minus z equals positive 1. I will just first copy my two previous rows and I will now write this in my third row. Negative y minus z is equal to 1. 
let us now write the corresponding augmented matrix. We have 1, negative 2, 3, 9. 0, 1, 3, negative 4. And 0, negative 1, negative 1, 1. And what happened here in the augmented matrix? R3 was replaced by R3 plus negative 2 times R1. You already achieved your equations involving Y and Z. So we are done with this one. Next, we now want to eliminate Y in order to get Z. Hence, we will now add equations 2 and we write our answer to equation 2 plus equation 3 in our third row. We get 2z is equal to 4. And therefore, the associated augmented matrix is 1, negative 2, 3, 9, 0, 1, 3, 5, 0, 0, 4. Equivalently, what that did with our augmented matrix is from the previous matrix, what happened there, we replaced row 3 by row 3 plus row 2. This is the what we wanted to achieve. 2z is equal to 4. To solve for z, divide equation 3 by our corresponding augmented matrix is 1, negative 2, 3, 9, 0, 0, 1, 2. What happened there was R3 was scaled by 1 half, meaning to say it was multiplied by 1 half. Now that we have this, we can use back substitution to find the solution. Upon doing that, you will obtain x equals 1, y equals negative 1, and z is equal to 2. Or we say that the solution in triple notation would be 1, negative 1, 2. This illustration shows that all the operations that you do with your linear equations, it will be recorded by your row operations in your augmented matrix. Let's take a look at the augmented matrix that we obtained in the end. In our next lesson, we will study row echelon form and this is what we want to obtain so that we would be able to solve for the variables.